Worm on a string. They're really cute and they're making a comeback. If you like to crochet, I've got a free tutorial on how you can make your own big worm on a string. I also have a video on my giant seven foot rainbow worm on a string. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how I made my seven foot worm and how you can make yours too using just yarn. Hi, my name's Alex and welcome to my channel. Here are just some of the worms that I've made using this method. And the smallest one is about one foot long and the largest one about seven foot long. So you can make your worm on a string whatever length you like using this method. And it's super easy. For this project, you're going to need some yarn, a pair of scissors, two googly eyes and craft glue, some fishing line, a fine comb or pet grooming brush, or both if you can, and a small amount of cardboard. But I'll go through these things as we go through the project and just explain them in a little bit more detail to help you. My model for today, Tango, was made using the Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I'll also be using this yarn and Spot Saver USA style today for the two different projects I'll be showing you. I've also put up on the screen a list of alternative yarns, but a lot of different yarns will work, especially if they're acrylic and if they have three or more plies, they seem to work really well. I'll also be using this acrylic yarn as the central core to my worm today. Uh, in the past, and like with this orange one with Tango, I've used this heavier duty cord that I've got from the local discount shop. It was $2, so it's very affordable and it's a lot stronger. And I wanted something strong because my dog plays with a lot of the things that I make and I didn't want it to break easily. So consider that when you're making your worm, whether you're going to have a big one that's going to be having that extra weight and it needs to strengthen it, or whether it's it's just something that you're going to play with and the yarn that you're using is going to be thick enough for it. You'll also need some fishing line, nothing too fancy there, and a little piece of cardboard or a toggle like I've got here uh, just to tie your fishing line onto. I had these already pre-made, they're little plastic things, little cards for embroidery cotton, but I put on the screen there a template if you want to just cut one out of cardboard to use. And you'll want your scissors to be sharp enough to cut your yarn. A nice finer style comb is perfect and a pet brush if you've got one is ideal as well. The fine tooth comb works really well for brushing out the yarn into the fluff. When you use a pet brush it seems to strip a whole lot more of the fiber out so just go very sparingly when we get to that point but I will remind you okay. This is a, a worm that I'd made earlier using a yarn and I did not check my yarn before I used it. I thought, oh, okay, it's, it's like a four ply. It's going to be perfect for it. The white fluffed up really nicely, but the rest of the yarn, even though you can see here breaking it apart, it's, it's got some nice fibers there. They would not break down. So just check the yarn that you're going to use. And, and like I said, many different brands and different styles of yarn will work, but just check it before you commit to to doing this because it does take a while to make and if you plan on making a huge giant worm like lumpkinella a big boy you're going to need a big boy strong cord or middle support and it's definitely worth working that out before you start your project because worms take a while to make so if you're using a heavier weight cord, what I generally do is just turn it turn it over at the end, tie a knot in it, and then you'll get a nice little loop there that you can attach your fishing line to later on. And once you start putting your yarn around that center core, it hides the tail there and keeps it all securely in place. So it's nice and strong and neat. Okay, let's get into it. So first up, work out roughly how big you want your worm to be so that you can cut the length of your middle support. Now, go a little bit overboard. and When you're cutting your support, make sure it's going to be more than long enough. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to start putting on the yarn rather than making it too short. So go a little bit extra and cut that off. Now today's worm is going to be based on the pansexual 
flag and it was suggested by one of my subscribers called Papa Pepperoni. So thank you Papa Pepperoni. This is a great idea. Uh, so we're going to start by tying some knots, about four knots in the end of your yarn and that's going to be the starting point or the nose of your worm. Cut a small amount of yarn of the colour that you're starting with on your nose. So mine's going to be pink. And you just want to check that you've got it long enough to be able to get to the fattest part of your worm. Um, this is the easiest way I've found to be able to cut all the lengths of your worm without wasting a lot of yarn. So what we're going to do is grab our piece of cardboard, fold it in half, my piece is already folded in half, and cut it to the length of the longest part of the yarn that we need and wrap it around that piece of cardboard. Keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. And when it's full, what we're going to do is just slip the scissors along the opening edge from where your cardboard is folded. So you can slip your, your scissors. I've got my little, my little embroidery scissors, but you can use any scissors just to snip along and cut your yarn into little individual pieces that are going to be a lot easier to work with. So there we go, a whole lot of yarn cut to length with very little wastage and that's a great way of being able to do that. If you like weird, wonderful, fun craft projects and you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. I'm only new to YouTube and I feel really weird for asking you to do this, but I'm certainly not new to craft and art and I've got so much awesome content I want to share with you. By hitting the like and considering subscribing and making a comment, you help inspire me to create a whole lot more fun, creative content. Thanks heaps for your support and back to the project. Now we're going to use all those short pieces of yarn to tie onto our core and what you want to do is try and get that as central as you can when you tie a knot. Only one knot's needed and you're going to try and get equal amounts either side and then start pulling apart all those different plies of your yarn. Now I have made a worm without doing that and I have made worm with, with doing that. And if you pull the plies apart, you will end up with a much better worm. But it does take patience, trust me. I mean, by the time you've done a couple of hundred of these little plies and pulling them apart, you, you know, feel like giving up. But don't, because wait until you see how amazing this worm is going to turn out. And you're going to be so much happier if you uh, just bear with it and keep going and be patient. With every short piece of yarn that you're adding, you're going to push it down as far as you can to the nose. Now, because our worm that we're making today with the pansexual flag is pink, yellow, and blue, what we're going to do is make the pink section a little bit bigger than the yellow and the blue section a little bit bigger than the pink and the reason is even though in the flag they are equal amounts uh, with the stripes you've got that nice big chunky yellow middle of the worm and with the pink with the head you've got the nose so it ends up being a little bit finer and then with the tail it's quite fine it gets it's a longer skinnier kind of look so what you're going to try and do is end up with equal amounts of those three colors so just I've worked out how long I want my worm to be I've tied a knot on the tail um, of that core so I know where I need to take the blue to and I'm putting the blue yarn on that tail and just going over the top of the um, the extra tail that's come back in the pink from the core and that will keep that nice and neat and tidy and you won't see that by the time we're finished fluffing up the worm. So here's the fun bit just adding more yarn, cutting more yarn, adding more yarn and opening up those plies and I'll come back to you when I've got that all done. Okay, we're all ready to start fluffing our worm. Not yet. Okay, so what we want to do is 
don't dive straight into using a pet brush because as I said before it will strip a lot of the fiber out and you'll end up with a uh, not very fluffy worm so get your fine tooth comb and start combing that not just the ends you really want to get uh, right down to the core to that middle core and just take your time with it be patient again if you take your time with it you'll end up with a much better result so we're going to do that all over just show you there how that fluffs up really quickly but look at the fiber that's already left in that brush yeah so we're going to go with a comb by holding each end of the worm, giving it a good shake, you end up getting all the yarn sitting out nice and thick and fluffy. Then we're going to trim off with our scissors, trim off any excess yarn that you can clearly see you don't need. Don't be too brutal at this stage. You just want to get rid of the excess so that when you're starting to fluff it up, you're not wasting your time fluffing up a whole lot of yarn that you don't need to worry about. So I'm just going to work with it, give it a shake, work with it and keep trimming down until I get the worm shape that I'm after. They call me Dr. Worm. Good morning, how are you? I'm Dr. Worm. Now we've got our great worm shape happening. Take your fine comb and start carefully combing it out. Now what I like to do is try, like almost sort of squash the worm at this stage. So what you're doing is you're combing out each side and then you'll turn the worm over and you'll do the same thing again. And this, you don't have to do it this way. It's just how I have found it to have a, a much better result when you do this. It's a lot easier to shape. So what you're doing is you can see where that middle line is that we've attached or the middle core that we attached all our yarn to and you can start to get a nice symmetrical shape. So I've given it a first, a first fluff and now I'm just trimming it again with the scissors and I'll work on the symmetry making sure it's the right shape and it matches both sides. Takes a little bit of work. Be patient again. Your patience will definitely be rewarded with amazing cuteness. Giving it a good shake again. Do some more trimming. Do some more brushing. And then we'll get on to using the pet brush. Um, you need to do that on the nose quite a bit to make it stand out because it's a very short pile of yarn. And then just working through very carefully. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it because you don't want to be pulling all the yarn out so just be patient and brush lightly so I'm going to go over the whole worm then I'll go back over it a couple of times just checking for areas where you can see the ply is still um, grouped together and it needs to be brushed out to be fluffified fluffified if that's not a word it should be Look how fluffy he is. Hey, this is really working out well. So more fluffing, a little bit more trimming. We're getting there. Oh, you gorgeous, beautiful worm. It's time to give you some eyes. Now it's time to add some eyes to our worm. I'm just using this fabric glue, which is like an all-purpose craft glue. You could use a 
variety of different glues and if you don't have googly eyes you can always make little cardboard eyes or felt um, if it's a very small worm you could perhaps use cardboard that you hole punch and just use those two little circles from your hole punching and add pupils on with a sharpie or another black marker and then glue them on or you could use buttons there's a lot of different things you could use as an alternative to, to googly eyes you can add your fishing line now just by tying it around the nose and because it's quite fine it will get buried into the fluff so you won't see where it's attached. If you're making a giant worm you'll be able to attach that to the little loop that we left on the end of the core. Um, that would be the best and safest way to be able to attach that to your worm. So tie a couple of knots, trim off the excess and now we'll work out how long we want our fishing line to be or our string. So when you've worked that out, just make sure that you also allow enough to be able to tie that onto the little toggle that you're using to be able to wind up your string. Um, you could use the cardboard as I suggested before. I'm using that little plastic embroidery cotton spool. Um, or you could just simply use a clothes peg or a bulldog clip, something that you can clip or tie your uh, string onto and then be able to wind it up. And there you go. Papa Pepperoni, thanks for suggesting this colour scheme for the worm and I hope you're happy with how it's turned out. And now on to finishing the other worm project I was working on. This one was inspired by a comment left by a subscriber called Uma Nagacha, who is a furry and she has a fursona that's a raccoon. And she's asked, could I make a raccoon themed worm on a string? Well, yes, Uma Nagacha, I have done exactly that. For this worm, I've used exactly the same process that I've just shown you. But I've just blended the colours by um, getting some grey yarn and some brown and just occasionally popping a section of brown through the grey to give it a nice sort of fur-like uh, look. And I'm going to shape it a little bit more like a raccoon and not so long and pointy in the nose. So just going through, fluffing it up, exactly the same process as before. Fluff and trim, fluff and trim. I'll also keep the tail a little more like a raccoon's tail and I'm going to be adding googly eyes and also some little felt ears just to give it more of a raccoon look. So for the ears I'm using some white felt, I've just cut out the shape that I wanted and I will add two layers of the grey to the back. Now the reason I'm doing two layers rather than just one layer of grey is because I'm trying to give a little bit more substance to the base of the ear so that it will glue into place really well. Just check the size before I glue it. And doing this means that you can actually make other animals. You don't have to just do your normal worm on a string. You could make a cute ferret, a snake. There's all sorts of things that you could do and have fun with this. Just finishing our raccoon worm by adding the toggle and the fishing line. Oh, I think he looks really adorable. I'm hoping that Omanagacha, you like this creation. We'll actually have to name these two. So if anyone's got any suggestions for names, please pop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Now I'm happy with them, but what did my little dog Piglet think? Let's check out and see what Piglet thinks. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah. I think Piglet likes these way too much. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you make your own worm on a string or five because they are so much fun to make. If you did like it, 
please leave me a like and a comment. I would love to hear from you. Also, think of, of subscribing because I'm going to be putting up a whole lot more free, fabulous content in the future. So bear with me. I think you'll have a lot of fun. So bye for now. But as always, stay awesome.